Today I want to have a look at how to create annotations or how to mark up elevations and sections. Uh, I'm going to show you an, an existing one that I've got here at the moment just to explain all the elements and then we can look at some of the more, more of the details later. So we derive the representation of our elevation from a floor plan or more importantly the 3D elements is from our BIM model and the settings that we see are based on the elevation tool. So in order to be able to see the elevation tool uh, we can go to our floor plan and select that, go into the settings and then we can change those settings here. The other way of course as long as we know which one it is is to go to the settings of the view in the project map north elevation down the bottom elevation settings and that takes us to the same place. So we can access that while still remaining in our elevation. Uh, we could also select multiples of these and then go to the settings and that would allow us to change them all together. We just have to be very careful that we're not overriding other settings that we don't want to change. So in terms of this elevation, let's go back to this at the moment. We can see at the moment this is representing as color. So this sort of plan uh, typically I've created for the purpose of representing something like um, a DA drawing. For DA development application or approval, the council wants to understand the materiality. So we're both showing color and hatch and also maybe a label or a annotation in order to be able to explain that materiality. It also helps people who aren't necessarily uh, familiar with graphic representation in an architectural format what this building might look like. So it's a little bit easy for someone that doesn't know how to read plans and because these sorts of drawings will go out for neighbor notification that's important as well. If we were trying to represent this not for something like a, a development application but for maybe a construction certificate or maybe a working drawing for construction instead of representing in color we might want to represent all in black and white because that would be more Australian standard or the graphic requirement of what we should be showing. Now the way that we change that is in our model display. When we go down to our uncut elements, pretty much everything in our elevation will be uncut. The only thing that will sometimes be cut is the terrain or the mesh and anything we're cutting through maybe on the floor, uh, on the ground, like a slab. Maybe it's a veranda or a pathway or driveway. Hopefully there's nothing else in the building that we're cutting through an elevation. So what we want to do is where it says uncut elements we're going to change that to uniform pen color. And we see that that's going to change our background so it's white We'll just turn the true line right on to explain this a bit better. And we're still going to see that there's going to be some differentiation in line thickness. And so if we go to our wall setting, we have the thickness of our wall outline. That's also derived based on the materiality. So if we go into, in this case it's a composite, the composite has a line type or a line thickness, a pen weight. Uh, that will determine that as well. So we can change those pen weights and also just to clarify our scale also changes our representation of line weights. Of course that's done some crazy things to our annotations. So what does that tell us? When we're creating elevations and sections one of the very first things that we should do is determine what scale we're going to be representing that as. Now how do we choose that? It's generally chosen by how much information we need to show. I like using little labels to represent materiality. I'll explain these a bit later. Uh, but basically they're clean, so I don't need to have a lot of annotations running off the side of my page. Uh, the only sort of long annotations or labels we could say in Archicad that I'll use is these heights. We don't dimension in a, a standard method a segmental or linear method for elevations and sections, we generally dimension with a an RL or a, a height value, a relative height 
or in our case an Australian datum height if we can. So we're seeing here that these height levels are based up on a number. That number is not very big, it's only 13 meters. So this is based on an RL which isn't necessarily provided uh, based on Australian height datum in this case because I don't have one. Now how do we decide what scale we should be working at? One of the other ways that we might work that out is to look at the drawing that we're going to place that on, or in ARCHICAD terms, the layout. So this layout, if I go into the settings of this, this layout is determined, well, it is set by a master layout, which is A1. So this is an A1 drawing, and the way that I generally like to set up my drawings and the way that I recommend for other people, my students, to set up drawings is that, go back into this view, that if I am going to be placing my drawings onto a, an A1 page, then I might also want to reduce those and reproduce those at A3 rather than A1 because it's much easier and more cost effective to print. It might be easier to manage on site as well for a builder, which means I need to make sure that if I'm going from an A1 to an A3, once I get the plans reduced in half that the scale is still readable. Therefore, if I'm going at 1 to 50 on A1, that will produce a drawing on an A3 at 1 to 100. The other thing to understand in terms of that is that my text size should be a minimum of 3 millimeters. Why? This is my rule. You can make it bigger than this as well. Uh, my minimum is 3 because that means when I, again, Print a drawing at 50% from A1 to A3, that means that the text size will go down to 1.5 millimeters, and that's, I find, the smallest that is comfortable to read on a drawing. So I'm not going to use text any smaller than that. So everything will be a minimum of three, and sometimes I'll have things that are much larger than three if it's a title. So this is the basis of our elevations. Uh, sections are very much the same, so I'm not going to focus too much on those at the moment. Uh, everything here that we see is modeled except for the annotations and dimensions. And I'm just going to quickly run through how each of those are created. So this little triangle that we see is a dimension. And we find this dimension tool, if we go to our normal dimension tool, let's, sorry, let's click off this so it's not highlighted. We go to our normal dimension tool and it's this option here, our elevation method. Now this is related. So if I was to drag a copy of this, we can see that it will automatically adjust. So this is a fantastic tool because we can drag multiple copies and that it will automatically adjust to whatever height that I am linking it to. We see here that this is currently not quite correct in terms of what I've drawn is just a piece of text, a line, and a dimension tool, but those aren't actually aligning with the roof ridge. So what we might need to do is to adjust these so that they fit. Now what we could do is link this line to this ridge. I understand that would be a better BIM approach. Uh, in terms of a better markup drafting approach, linking this to a line instead allows me to multiply these and adjust them a lot faster. Management-wise, could be an issue. So we'll talk about that later. We'll look at that in, in a different video. It's not something that I want to spend too much time on now. Uh, similarly, this text is not linked. This is just standard text. And it's got a frame around it just to make it stand out a little bit. Whereas this is linked text. If I select this, what is it? It's a label. So it's our label tool. And if we go into our label tool settings, we have a lot of different options of labels. So this is one of the advantage of the last few versions of ARCHICAD. One of these is our surface label. This is the one that I'm using at the moment. And what it's representing in the general settings is the surface to display and then it gives me a few options because I've clicked on a wall already it's giving me wall options so wall outside surface wall inside surface of course it's called surface because that's the option that I'm using if I wanted to have 
a different amount of information, I could use a different label tool and the wall edge surface. Similarly, if I was to not click on a wall but click on a roof, as in a roof object, it doesn't matter what we're actually representing it as in ArchiCAD, it just matters what the tool itself is. So this is a roof, this is the label that I've associated with that roof, and we see that it has its own options, roof, top surface, roof, edge surface, roof, bottom surface. Now those names are a little bit awkward, aren't they? So that's called Slate, and this one's called RMD Weatherboard. It's not a lovely little acronym that we want to, that I have here. So what I'd need to do if I wanted to use this surface label might be to actually adjust the surface. So remembering that this is called RMD Weatherboard and I want RMD Weatherboard to be called SLC. would be to update that. And we can see that that's now automatically updated this text. I need to increase the size of this to three. So I've now reproduced my unlinked 2D text information with something that's a lot smarter, a lot better for our BIM application. And of course the advantage of that is, oh, to pick up the settings and I can apply that as many times as is necessary around this project and even on different surfaces. Again, we'll see that if that surface has the wrong name, it's needing to be adjusted. So then I could go in and change that setting. RMD render dark gray. Hopefully that makes sense. Now one more that we're going to quickly look at is the window marker. The window marker is very similar uh, to the surface marker that we were just looking at, which is a label tool. We'll go into that setting. This is our door window stamp. In this case, 22 is the version of ArchiCAD that I'm currently using. Now what I like to do is to keep this as simple as possible. There is a lot of ability to add a lot of information in the stamp tool. That's not what I want to do. That's why I have a door and window schedule. So instead, under show ID, the only thing that I'm going to show is my ID. When I go to the settings, there's a lot of different settings we can look at here. We can adjust as necessary. So you can make a lot of changes to this if you want. And again, the point of this is it's auto-updatable. So if I click on any door or window, it's going to automatically assign the given door and window number. Now, I needed to assign the door and window number. This is just labeling. So if I go into my door tool, click on the settings, or let's just get out of that for a second. A faster way to find this is if I click on it, and instead of going into my info box, if I scroll to the end of my list, that's my door and window number. That's a number that I've created. Uh, if we go into that setting, let's have a look at where we find that. If we go down to classification and properties, ID and categories, our ID number is there. So I'm using a D or W, D for door, W for window, uh, and then I'm using a system which allows for a lot of space. So 105, Whereas this window or door down here is called W004, D001. So zero being the lower ground floor, one being the upper ground floor, and the last two numbers just being the number in the sequence. So if we go up to our floor plan, let's go to the save view. So it's a little bit smarter. We can see that we start from here, door one, window one, and then they're described in an anti-clockwise direction. The reason why we want to go in an anti-clockwise direction is because when we go to our elevation, it makes sense because we read from left to right. So nine, eight, nine, I'm missing ten, oh, ten's around the corner. 
11, 12, 13, and so on. So this is the first video of a few uh, describing how this elevation and section annotation works. Basically, I've just talked about how we create it. Uh, and in the next video, I'm going to give you some examples of me doing so.